What part of this cute dog are we painting today? We are working on the blocking of the chest, the cheeks, and some details. Here is that reference photo one more time. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi there, and welcome to Mimi's Art. Thank you so much for being here. If you have not checked out the first videos that leads up to where this painting is right now, I encourage you to go and check that out. You can find those in the description. There's three videos leading up to this one because I already painted the eyes and one of the ears and part of the fur. If you want to see how I did that, please go check that out. Description. Alrighty. Now, as I set up this particular painting session, I wasn't really paying attention as to where I had my camera. So you can actually watch me mixing color this time. So let me know what you think about that. So we're working on a block in. So that's basically one single color, usually a mid-tone, that I put in on the white canvas. I just follow my sketch. This is actually a fairly easy part of the painting. You just basically, you know, paint in the section that you've kind of sketched out with that particular color. And don't have to worry too much about having the right color here. You want a mid-tone, you want something that is a base that'll shine through, that you can paint over, you know, that you can actually have as a base to start layering your fur on. So don't worry when you're doing this, if your color isn't 100% correct, that's totally okay. I'm using a flat brush. This one is a bit older. It's a little bit frayed. It doesn't matter really um, if it's an old or new flat brush, but I like flat brushes for this particular part just because it fills it in fairly easy. I would say flat brush works, angular brush works, filbert brush might work on this as well. That's nice and soft. It really depends on what you feel like grabbing at that point. Not too worried if I'm going to go over something that I've already painted because we can always adjust that and go back and add more details and specifics later. You see that I dip it into the water, but I forgot to do the other side. This was a mistake I made. I dipped it in the water, figured, oh goodness, uh, I forgot the other side. Let me get back into this. However, now I have a lot of water in my brush and you will actually notice as I put this on the canvas that it's a lot more wet and a lot more like translucent than the other side. So yes, I made a mistake and I purposely kept it in here because I wanted you to see <laughs> that, you know, we all make mistakes and that sometimes you just kind of have to roll with the punches. So I basically still fill in that this little part as a block in but I will go back over it again because you can almost start seeing the canvas shining through here. So it's, it's just not enough paint to cover this. I have my camera set up this way I kind of figured I'd show you a little bit about the mixing part I don't know if you like that let me know in the comments if you actually would like to see my palette and see how I mix the colors if you want to know which colors I'm using check out the description the colors are all listed in there but let me know because if I show you the whole mixing process the videos will become longer but it might just help you you know with your color mixing so here's the reference photo again and just to see what we're aiming for and what it looks like right now obviously not the exact same picture yet but we're working on it and i just want to pop that up every so many minutes so that we can actually still look at okay what are we trying to achieve
I'm changing my brush to an angled brush and actually I'm zooming in just a tiny little bit to show you how I'm mixing the next color. I can't do a full zoom in on this palette because I have the camera set up focused on the subject. So you will see that the subject is fairly sharp, my palette not so sharp. Just so you know, that's just the way I had my camera set up. Let me know if you'd like to see the palette somewhere in the corner, you know, from a top view so you can actually see how I mix if that's something you're interested in. I have to give you a little bit of a heads up because for whatever reason, I'm missing some footage here um, because you'll see me starting to put in the color and it's gonna jump over to a part where I've already put it in. I do not know what happened there. I think I must have messed up a setting on my camera and I just totally messed that up. Obviously you see that the color change is pretty abrupt. Story about that. I don't know what I did. Anyway, we're still blocking in and we're blocking in the chest area. This is still the same brush that I used to block in the cheeks and the sides. And I'm trying to overlap some of these sections here so you will get a bit of a smoother transition and so it starts to look a little bit more fluffy and not just like random colors next to each other, but that it actually becomes part of a whole. Popping up that reference photo for you again and here I'm just blocking in the rest of the chest. Now you can see that I'm not using a white here. Obviously the canvas is white, the color I'm putting on is not white. You don't ever go in with plain titanium white if there is white fur on your reference photo. You always go in with like a grayish or a brownish undertone or a mixture of both to build up the layers to let that shine through so that you can build up shadows and in the very end, that's when that titanium white comes in at the very final details. Here I'm starting to add a second layer to the cheek area just in order to create that illusion of fur. Again, I've said this in many videos is that once I have a color on my palette, once I have a color on my brush, I try to use it wherever I think I want this in my painting. So that's why you'll see me putting it in on the cheeks. And I'll go back to those cheeks later on in the painting. But for now, just putting in a little bit of a rough, you know, fur type texture. Now here I'm going to go and try to create that, you know, sort of glow that's in behind the fur around the dog. You'll see it when I pull up a reference photo later on. And I'm also still covering whatever white canvas is still showing. So just trying to fill in the spots, fill in the places. Look at my reference photo and um, just happily keep going.
changing my brush back to the angle brush. This time there's a bit of a brownish color on there. This is to create more depth because you know, that one dark color that I laid down there, one color, super dark, very flat. So now we're gonna have to go in and start making it look more like fur, not just one basic color on the canvas. Because if you wanna make it look realistic, it's layers guys, layers and layers and more layers. changing to a liner brush and I'm starting to put in a few details here where colors meet and I'll be moving up to the cheek and start adding more finer details this is just to make that transition look like fur like fluffy fur like hair strands and um, yeah this is a perfect brush for it I love this liner brush it does a really 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 good job here's the reference photo again just to see where we're at and what we're trying to do so yeah you see that I'm trying to just create a little bit more finer hair textures on there. Now, I've been working on this dog painting for a while. It still is not finished. It's still sitting on my easel and the plan is to get that done pretty soon here. But I'd like to hear from you. What other animals would you like to see? What other subjects would you like to see me paint? What are you interested in seeing from me? Just let me know. Throw it in the comments.
here's another brush change and now I'm actually going in with like a, it's like a yellow sandy brownish color trying to bring warmth into that part of the painting again it's layering this might look messy and it might look ugly there's always always an ugly stage to your paintings and especially if you work in sections you'll have that ugly phase over and over again just because you're doing one section at a time rather than if you do it all at once then you might have the ugly phase for a little bit longer but that's only one time so yeah if you break it up into pieces you'll get it a few times reference photo once again just so that you can see um the warmth that I'm trying to put in there, you can see it in the reference photo, it's a lot warmer than it is on my canvas. So that's why I popped it up there so you can kind of see the difference. Now I'm changing back to that angle brush. And I must say that these angle brushes work quite well for fur. I would really encourage you to try it, play with it, change angles on that brush as you paint, change the pressure that you put on it and see what you can create because the angle brush is pretty versatile. I, I've actually really come to love it. I really enjoy working with it. So yeah, play around with that. And even other brushes like the round brush, the filbert brush, depending on the size of your painting or the size of your subject, just play around and figure out and see what you can do with it because it'll be different for every person. And um, I really enjoyed working with this angled brush on this uh, particular part of the, of the face. Now there's going to be a little section where you can see a lot of pauses. 
a lot of thinking moments, as I call them. I just don't like to rush the process and then having to fix mistakes afterwards. It is totally okay to go at the pace that works for you. If you're a fast painter, paint fast. Don't try to paint slow. If you're a slow painter, keep at that pace. Don't try to rush it. If you don't work well that way. The end product is what matters, not how fast or how slow you get there. It doesn't matter. Don't put time pressure on yourself. Changing to a small liner brush, just so that I can put some details back around the eyes because I might have covered them when I did the block in. That's why I said it's fine if you cover some things up, you can go back and sometimes it still shines through a little bit and you can use that as a guide. And also just go back to that reference photo and see what do I see there and what do I want to put in there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I do apologize for the shadow that you kind of see on the canvas. Um, that is pro most likely my head turning to the left to look at my reference photo because the, my laptop is sitting on the left side of the canvas and I think I just had my ring light angled in a way that every time I turn my head you can see a little bit of a shadow showing up on the canvas. So my apologies for that. I've never really noticed that in any of my other videos. I don't know, sometimes you just set up and you don't really pay attention. You just want to get the painting and yeah, then you end up with little hiccups like this. But you know what? It's fine. It's just life. It's reality. And you can still see what I'm doing. So I think we're fine. summer is coming to an end I'm just wondering how your summer has been I would love to hear from you I would love to actually create a little community if you want to chat in the comments feel free to do so I like to hang out in there so drop me a line
have changed to a round brush right now and bringing in some shadows between the previous strokes it looked a little you know flat still and um yeah that's why i went in with the round brush you can see that that creates slightly different strokes in the angled brush so like i said play around with the different brushes the different sizes if you have them and just um, see how they react to you painting with them This painting session uh, was about 45 minutes for me and I just want to reiterate again if you missed the first three videos leading up to this one go check them out link is in the description about the next painting video I will go into more details around the chest and cheek area and the fur so stay tuned for that but until then stay happy keep your peace God bless you and I'll see you in the next one bye bye